Welcome to the Michigan Golfer Show. Join us each week as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great game. We're Michigan Golfer TV, and we're at Travis Point Country Club, which will be hosting the LPGA Volvic Championship on Memorial Day weekend. This year, it's the inaugural one. And with us, on my right, is Mike Already, the head pro here. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing great, thank you. And on my left is Bill Newcomb, who's the architect of this course at Travis Point. How are you doing, Bill? I'm doing great, thank you. Well, it's so exciting to have an LPGA championship coming to Southeast Michigan, especially in an Olympic year. So what should you expect? And I would say the answer is one word, Olympics. Now, I'm not saying we're going to bring, you know, the five rings, but we're going to be a lot like your Olympic experiences. And what I mean by that is the LPGA is the tour in women's golf. I'm not saying that because I'm the commissioner. I would say that because I'm the commissioner. I'm saying that because it's true. The best in the world in women's golf aspire to get to one place, and this is the place. They do that at the prime of their playing career. If you think about the Olympics, you take young athletes at the absolute best of their career, and you pit them together to find out who's the best in the world. That's what the LPGA does week in and week out. What are some of the things that Travis Point is doing to get ready for this, especially in terms of volunteers? Well, you know, Travis Point um, is really excited about having this event um, for the community mainly, um, and obviously to give some uh, picture to Travis Point in regards to showing the golf course off and, and showing the community. Um, but we have a couple hundred uh, volunteer members that are going to help in the event. And I know they have right now 425 volunteers um, overall, and they're looking to add another 175. What are some of the things somebody who would like to be a volunteer can expect to be doing? You know, anywhere from on-course scoring, I know they need a lot of help with still marshalling uh, on the holes, which is great because they get to see the golf, um, but all kinds of things from transportation to, uh, to helping with the catering and, and different things like that. And Bill, what are the ladies going to see when they get to the course? Well, I think they're going to see a lot of good golf holes. Uh, we designed the course uh, uh, especially for very uh, varied types of shots. Long shots, short shots, easy shots, hard shots. I, I hope they experience every one of those. <laughs> well, that brings to mind that you were one of the people who really started putting a lot of tees instead of just basic three. There are th th sometimes five, sometimes six. That's right, and uh, this was one of the first courses we did that had five tees, and we're very glad we did because uh, it stretches uh, o from over 7,000 yards down to maybe 6,500, so or 6,200 for for the uh, for the women. But I know they'll play it longer. The tournament women will play it longer than that, I'm sure. They play from what's typically the white tees, I think. Probably so. I, I'm not quite familiar with their tournament uh, requirements, but that's what I would suggest. I think that'd be a great course for them. Well, one of the things that's always interesting about an LPGA tournament as opposed to a PGA tournament is how accessible the players are, especially at the Pro-Am Day. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that, Mike? Well, I know that uh, you know the, the women are definitely more accessible um, than the PGA Tour. And right now, uh, they're planning on having upwards of 200 uh, amateurs playing the Pro-Am. And what they do in the, uh, in the LPGA, that uh, each group will play with two separate pros. One will play the uh, front side, and then they'll change and play the back side with another pro, which is unique also. So everybody who's playing in the Pro-Am gets a chance to play with two of them. Yes, yeah. and, and that's, you know, and you're talking about a lot of great players. Um, and like Bill was talking, I know that they plan on playing the golf course for the women right around 6,600 yards. Okay, so tell us what that means when it comes to, um, say, a finishing hole. What are people going to see on 18? Well, they'll see, uh, there they'll see a little longer hole. It's uh, one of the two longest holes on the golf course, which I think is great. But they have a lot of uh, variants on how to play the hole. I mean, they can gamble a little bit and cut it close and cut the yardage. Uh, tell us about a hole where they might be doing that um, when you're talking about a gamble. Well, I think probably the fourth hole would come to mind as a first hole for gambling. It's, uh, it is the longest par five. 
It's got a stream that guards the green. It's got trees on both sides of the fairway. It's a tough hole. Well, let's see, the course was built in 1977, and it really, looking at the trees, looks like it's been here longer, I think. It, it's a great golf course, and I always tell people uh, when we're showing them around here is that Bill Newcomb had a lot of foresight when he made this golf course, just because of all the different teeing grounds. Um, like Bill said, I mean, we go almost 7,500 from the very back tees, and uh, since Bill designed the course, we actually um, shortened uh, the women's tees up to 5,800 yards. So there's, there's a big variance for people to have some fun. Well, that's great, not just for women, but for seniors, senior women, juniors. And it really is a way to get more people in a family involved in playing, playing golf, right? Hopefully so. Yes, we're for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bill, I think one of the one time we saw you recently was up at Crystal Mountain for the Michigan Women's Open, and you were you were watching the players there. And uh, typically, I think they've been having that particular tournament there for quite a while. That's a hilly course. This is different, right? Uh, it's very different. This is very subtle. Uh, there are a lot of hills here, as the players will find in lies, various lies. Uh, where Crystal Mountain was uh, was very hilly, I would I would say this is softly hilly. Softly hilly. That sounds like a quote. <laughs> One of the things I'm most excited about is watching the players from all around the world because many of them will be playing in Rio. They're already already look like they've got a slot so it's a good chance to see some of the best golf in the country I think so. well without a doubt and and what's really unique about Ann Arbor um, there's so many different cultures in the Ann Arbor area that uh, I know that uh, right now there's a lot of people wanting to house these gals and it's it's just a fantastic thing for the women uh, but also it's great for our members and for the community because you know they can really get to know the players up personal so May 23rd through 29th here at Travis Point Country Club come out and watch some of the best golf in the world at the LPGA Volvic tournament thanks a lot guys thank you very much thanks it was fun Thank you.